Okay, let's review that rule one more time involving us uh, orthographic mapping rules involving, you know, when to drop the silent E. Let's just clarify that one again. When we have uh, VCE words, like let's say uh, smile, right? Would you agree that is a, a vowel consonant magic E? Yes, or silent E? When we have a word like this, a VCE word, and we want to add an inflectional suffix. Inflectional suffix could be like ing, um, ed, and s, right? Smiling, smiled, smiles, right? Uh, there's sometimes when, when, when we add the inflectional suffix, we're going to drop the e, get rid of it, and add the suffix. And there's other times we're going to keep the e, and we're going to just add the inflectional suffix. Now, words where we drop the e, so this picture says uh, inflectional words with an E drop. Okay, like drop the mic, drop the E. When we're going to drop the E and just add the inflectional suffix, if we take the word smile, uh, oops, smile, right? And we add the ING or uh, smile and add the uh, ED. When... Uh, when there is a, when the suffix that we're adding has a vowel in it, right? We're gonna drop the E and just add the suffix. So if the suffix that we're adding, the inflectional suffix has a vowel, we drop the E and then this would now become, you know, our, our smiling, right? Or, or this one would become our smiled. So that's the rule. If the suffix that we're adding like uh, the ing or ed has a vowel sound in it for initial vowel sound, we're going to drop the e and just replace it with that uh, suffix with the vowel. R drop the e and replace it with that suffix with the vowel. Okay. And when we have a when we have a suffix that does not have an e, or does not have a vowel, like for example, uh, smile, smile, and then the s, and there's there's no vowel in this suffix here then what we do is we don't drop the E, we keep the E, the silent E, and this just would become uh, smiles, right? Is that right? So I'm just going over this rule on, on this orthographic pattern when we're trying to add an inflectional suffix to BCE words. When do we drop the E? Well, we drop the E when we have suffixes like these. And when do we uh, keep the E? We keep the E or do not drop the E uh, when we have an inflectional suffix like the S, okay? All right, now we've gone over that orthographic pattern, okay? Now you're gonna see it in a question. And I want you to study this one, memorize it, so that if you see this, you automatically know um, this thing. You, so your friend here is when to drop silent E with inflectional suffixes, right? That's your friend. So that's in your mind. And now you're gonna read this question, okay? Ready? Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, everyone, take a moment now. Read this nice juicy question. And I'm gonna give a suggestion because this would take a lot of teachers sometimes three to four minutes because it's really long. Um, I'm gonna give you a challenge. I mean, of course you could just start pausing me and read it to yourself. And, and some teachers may wanna do that, but when you see a long question, okay? When you see a long, long, long question like this is, um, I think it's a mistake to start here and read it. What I would do is this, I would take 30 seconds and look at the picture. And in that 30 seconds, I try to identify the main idea, okay? And then I would take 30 seconds and read the prompt and just in 30 seconds, see if the main idea that you spotted in the picture is reinforced in the scenario. So maybe you try that, okay? Everyone take 30 seconds and just read what I surfed the read the picture and identify the main idea. Go. 30 seconds on your own. Okay, 30 seconds. Did you identify your friend? This is about your friend dropping silent E. Who got that? Oh yeah, it's a picture about dropping silent E. We just did that. And this is tells us when what inflectional suffixes we do drop the E. We drop the E with, you know, suffixes like ing and ed. And we don't drop the E with suffixes like an S. Yes? You probably got that in 30 seconds. Hey, to be honest with you, 
I bet some of you got that in 10 seconds. Yes? So in 10 seconds, you looked at the picture, you already identified your friend. This is my friend dropping the silent E with VCE words. Now I want you to take 30 seconds and I want you to skim over this and see if that is the picture reinforces what's here. 30 seconds on your own, go. Pause, unpause, whichever one you're at. When you're ready, turn me on. Okay, you looked at the picture, you saw this was about dropping silent E. And uh, I think it's, this is definitely a spelling activity, right? Involving silent E words, syllable patterns, and what you do with inflectional suffixes. That takes 30 seconds. Now look, once you do that, once you identify your friend, this is a spelling orthographic mapping question about dropping silent E and inflectional suffixes, okay? Uh, um, once you have that with VCE words, once you get that, so I'll do that one more time. What is this? Oh, it's my friend. When you drop silent E in VCE words and add inflectional suffixes, once you have that, and if you get that in 30 seconds, great. Then you are to immediately go to the question because everything else here is just too much detail. Once you know this is a this is a spelling activity involving VCE words and dropping the E with inflectional suffixes. Once you have that, you skip the rest of this and you go to the prompt. So now I want you to read this in one minute. I get it. Unpause. Some students, such as the pair whose work is shown, correctly sort the words, but they cannot generate an orthographic rule for when to drop the silent E. So they know how to sort the words, right? But they don't know the rule for sorting the words. Um, the teacher could best support the students by prompting them to what? Hmm. How could they help them with the rule? Um, is it uh, focus on morphemes and more complex words, like how morphemes form complex words for this one? I don't think that's going to lead us to the rule for when to drop the silent E, right? So I'm going to cross that one off. Um, is it describe, what, I'm move my mic here, describe what features all the base words had in common? before an inflectional suffix was added? Is that the issue? I don't think that's the issue. I think they can tell that these are all VCE words, right? Cross that one off. Now there is a D option and you can go to this test to read over that D, number 26. But um, I only have three up here because it's such a long question. It's not A, it's not C. Now, how about this? Examine the constant vowel patterns of the base words and the suffixes on both sides. So when we go back to this chart here, um, we notice that this all these words for, were VCE words, right? Yes? And when we added the suffixes, all these suffixes uh, retained a vowel consonant vowel, right? Now, sometimes the E, because it's a VCE word, which is technically a vowel, constant vowel, the E was replaced with an I. But, but either way, we retain that structure, vowel, consonant, vowel, yes? So whatever suffix we add, we want to retain that structure, vowel, consonant, vowel. So sometimes we keep the E to keep that vowel, consonant, vowel. Other times we drop the E and add in the I and G to keep that structure. Vowel, consonant, vowel. Vowel, consonant, vowel. Right. Right? Okay, now I get it. B may take some time to wrap your head around. All right? Tough question. All right, here's my thing. Team, when we reviewed this in advance, yes? And then you learned the rule. When to drop silent E in VCE words, right? And that was in your head. Wasn't this question easier to analyze? I mean, now that that was in your head floating around, yes? 
if you saw that on the day of the test, if you saw your friend went to drop uh, silently with VCE words with inflectional suffixes, if you had that floating in your head, you would have a shot at doing this question in two to three minutes, right? Maybe you'd be able to cross out some that didn't work. And you'd have a lot better chance on the day of the test of getting this answer, right? That's all I can do right now is get, get you closer to the answer. So maybe you start by learning this rule, yes? So you can spot it, you can spot it when it's used in a question and get to the answer and navigate through this question faster. Cool question. And again, this is a really good test. If you're definitely, if, if you're a reading specialist, it's a great test to look at. If you're uh, taking the 90 or Science of Teaching Reading or RECA, it's a good push question. You got exposure to all these ideas going on here, okay, to get to B. So good challenge question, good push question, okay? All right. Now, uh, we got one more in this set and one more involving um, orthographic mappings and spelling errors that involve a code-based difficulty, okay? So here, let's go to that one now.